The Core Ultra 7 265K is part of Intel's brand new desktop lineup. It's an 8P core, 12 E core processor that balances solid multi core performance, next gen platform features, and cutting edge efficiency. And since it's an unlocked K series processor, you'll need to pair it with a high quality motherboard that helps you unlock its full potentials, whether through overclocking or simply ensuring long term thermal and power stability. To help you pick a motherboard that sits well with your new 15th gen Intel chip, I've researched and compared several options to pick the three best ones. A budget friendly, then a premium board, and lastly my top pick, which offers the best overall value. Let's jump right into it, you can check prices in the description, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you find my video useful. First, my budget pick is the ASRock Z890 Pro A. If you're on the hunt for a motherboard with a flagship chipset that doesn't break the bank, then the ASRock Z890 Pro A is one of your best options. It's among the most affordable and entry-level ATX Z890 motherboards out there, and while it might seem pretty bare bones at first glance, it delivers solid performance and a decent feature set for its low price. In terms of specifications, the motherboard uses an all-black 6-layer PCB with 2-ounce copper layers in between. Since it's a budget option, there's no onboard RGB and the design is fairly basic. It comes with a 16 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 power phase configuration, with each phase rated at 60 amps, which is more than enough to handle not just the 265K, but even the more demanding 285K. That said, overclocking potential will be somewhat limited. The motherboard also features ASRock's two high-density EPS power connectors, which help deliver power to the VRMs for regulation and overall system stability. Both connectors can supply enough power to easily support high-end chips. You also get two generously sized VRM heatsinks with thermal pads underneath, helping keep the VRMs from reaching unfavorable temperatures. For memory, the board includes four DIMM slots in a two DIMM per channel configuration, supporting the latest CU DIMM standard. It supports DDR5 memory with a maximum capacity of 256 gigabytes and speeds of up to 9066 plus megatransfers per second. The storage situation is not bad either, offering four M2 slots and four SATA 3 6 gigabits per second ports. Only one of the M2 slots supports PCIe Gen 5 and comes with a heatsink cover, while the remaining three are PCIe Gen 4. It also has a fair selection of PCIe slots, with the primary one being the PCIe Gen 5x16 slot. It's the only one among the three that features a latch system and ASRock's reinforced steel shielding, which helps with the installation of heavier graphics cards. What it doesn't have is any built-in wireless networking functionality. However, it does include a PCIe Type 2230 M2 socket where you can install a Wi-Fi module yourself. And for gamers, wired network functionality is present. That being said, there are other Z890 boards with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, but those will cost you more than what the ASRock Z890 Pro A is asking for. Overall, the functionality of the motherboard is great, offering decent performance and a good selection of I.O. at a budget-friendly price. It only falls behind in a few areas, such as wireless networking, a more robust cooling solution, and the overall aesthetics of the board itself. To sum up, what I like is the fast memory support and latest CU DIMM standard, the PCIe Gen 5x16 and M2 expansion slots, and the simple design. On the downside, there is no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth functionality, and no flashy RGB or catchy aesthetics. Next, my premium pick is the Asus ProArt Z890 Creator Wi-Fi. Asus's ProArt motherboard lineup has always been aimed at professionals with a taste for clean, high-end aesthetics over the gamer-centric designs seen in the ROG and TUF series. With the Z890 Creator Wi-Fi, Asus continues to carry forward the product line's focus on delivering a premium feature set alongside a professional appearance. This is a standard ATX board that uses Intel's flagship Z890 chipset, offering full CPU and RAM overclocking support. You'll find subtle touches of the ProArt theme throughout the board, with flat gold lines across the large M2 Q-release heatsink, power up your imagination text on the left VRM heatsink, and ProArt branding on the chipset heatsink. It features a Digi Plus voltage regulator module and a 16 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 90 amp power 
stage design for a steady and precise power delivery to your CPU, which is more than enough to handle the 265K, even with some overclocking involved. Despite the large size, the heatsinks are reasonably low profile, so you shouldn't have any trouble installing bulky CPU coolers, such as the Noctua NHD15. For your graphics card, the ProArt Z890 Creator Wi-Fi includes Asus's Q-Release mechanism, which makes removing a GPU much easier than with traditional latch designs. The main PCIe slot also supports full Gen 5 bandwidth and is reinforced for extra durability, making it well-suited for high-end GPUs. In terms of memory, the board has four DDR5 DIMM slots, which, while placed fairly close to the CPU socket, shouldn't cause compatibility issues since most modern RAM kits and CPU coolers are designed with this layout in mind. As for your storage drives, the motherboard comes with five M2 slots, which adds up to provide a whopping amount of NVMe storage. One of them is PCIe 5.0 based and sits under the M2 Q-Release heatsink, while the remaining four are PCIe 3.0 based and support sizes up to M2 2280. Conveniently, all M2 slots feature a quick and tool-free SSD locking mechanism. The PCIe 4.0 M2 slots are also covered by one large M2 Q-Release heatsink, but if your SSDs come with a heatsink, you might end up removing it entirely. Overall, the ProArt Z890 Creator Wi-Fi is a performance board, and it certainly carries the classy vibe of one. It features heatsinks that keep the components within a good temperature range, a generous number of NVMe slots, and solid connectivity options with plenty of USB ports, including two USB Type-C ports supporting Thunderbolt 5 and Thunderbolt 4. There is also extensive attention to detail when it comes to convenience features, like SSD quick-release heatsinks, tool-free NVMe SSD mechanism, mechanisms, an improved graphics card locking latch, and single-clip memory slots. To sum up, what I like is the excellent power delivery and thermals, the clean, understated design, and the PCIe Easy Latch and toolless M2 installation. On the downside, there are no built-in RGB customization options, and it's not ideal for small form factor builds due to full ATX size. And finally, my top choice for the best motherboard for the Intel Core Ultra 7 265K is the MSI MAG Z890 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. The MSI MAG Z890 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi is a robust, full-size ATX motherboard designed to balance value, performance, and practicality, making it an excellent match for the Intel Core Ultra 7 265K. With its 16 plus 1 plus 1 phase VRM power delivery, each phase rated at 90 amps, the board can comfortably handle moderate overclocking on Intel's latest Ultra 7 chip, while staying cool thanks to generously sized VRM heatsinks. As Intel's Z890 chipset is positioned for high-performance builds, MSI made sure the MAG Z890 Tomahawk Max is packed with modern features. You get three PCIe x16 slots, one reinforced for your GPU, four M2 slots including a lightning-fast Gen 5 slot, dual 2.5 gig LAN, and the newest Wi-Fi 7 standard. There's also an impressive rear I.O. selection, multiple USB-C ports, including a 20 gigabits per second USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 port, HDMI and DisplayPort outputs, and a BIOS flashback button. In terms of memory support, the motherboard comes with four DDR5 U-DIMM slots, supporting speeds up to 9200 plus megatransfers per second via XMP profiles. The slots are placed far enough from the CPU socket, making it easier to install larger CPU air coolers or AIO water coolers without clearance issues. For storage, the four M2 slots all come with heatsinks, but similar to competing boards, only the primary slot includes dual-sided thermal pads. Aesthetically, the MAG Z890 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi leans towards a clean, stealthy look. The matte black PCB and brushed aluminum heatsinks look sophisticated, and there's a subtle touch of RGB lighting built into the chipset heatsink and under the I.O. shroud. For those who prefer less lighting, the RGB is modest and can easily be turned off or synced with other components. Installation is also straightforward thanks to MSI's thoughtful design touches. The primary PCIe slot has a PCIe Easy Latch to simplify GPU installation and removal, while the M2 slots use toolless latches instead of screws. MSI also updated the DIMM slots with a single-sided latch, making it easier to add or replace RAM modules.
If you're looking at alternatives, there are other Z890 boards like the Asus Tough Gaming Z890 Plus Wi-Fi or the Gigabyte Z890 Aorus Elite. The Asus Tough is competitively priced and has a similar feature set, though it lacks the PCIe Easy Latch and extra USB ports found on the MSI. Meanwhile, the Gigabyte Aorus Elite comes with slightly more aggressive aesthetics and RGB, but can cost a bit more. Overall, the MSI Mag Z890 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi isn't the cheapest option on the market, but when you consider its build quality, feature set, and ease of installation, it's a fantastic choice, especially for a modern build centered around the Intel Core Ultra 7 to 65K. To sum up, what I like is the balanced pricing for a Z890 board, the clean, understated design, and the PCIe Easy Latch and toolless M2 installation. On the downside, there's only one M2 slot that includes dual-sided thermal pads, it could use a few extra high-speed USB ports up front, and RGB may be too subtle for those who want a flashier build.